Let's tour the USS Alabama and the USS Drum. Built at the Norfolk Navy Yard in 1942, the USS Alabama was first stationed in the North Atlantic to guard against raids by German heavy ships. Later it was transferred to the Pacific Theater. After a 1945 overhaul, she was sent back to the Pacific where she participated in attacks on and the occupation of Japan. As you pull into the museum site, there are tanks, World War II bombers, a Huey helicopter from the Vietnam era, fighter jets from various periods, and they even have an old stealth bomber. Inside, you get to see a ton of other aircraft, including President Reagan's Marine One, and a red tail fighter flown by the famous Tuskegee Airmen. There's also a wall that highlights all the Congressional Medal of Honor winners that hail from the great state of Alabama. We're at the USS Alabama, and I gotta tell you, the sheer size of this battleship it's hard to imagine until you walk up to it. The Alabama is a South Dakota class battleship. It has a top speed of 28 knots or 32 miles per hour and a crew of 2,500 sailors. It weighed in at 34,000 tons or 70 million pounds. As you walk up the gangway, you're immediately met by the ship's main 16 inch guns. These babies could fire around 2.8 miles. These were the big guns that rained down hell on the enemy. Of course, a battleship the size of the Alabama had many other types of armaments. These are the 40 millimeter quadruple mounts, four guns side by side shooting 40 millimeter rounds. They would load a magazine containing several rounds here and they would fire away at the enemy. So how would they aim something like this? Well, the gunner would look through the hole on the post on the right and line it up with the X in the middle of the circle on the left. No computer aided targeting back then. The same thing was true of the deck mounted machine guns on the USS Alabama. As you head into the ship, think about sleeping like this, stacked one upon the other, and only having a small area like this locker to store all your personal items. Or going to the bathroom in a place like this, you had very little privacy. That's the way it was on a battleship. You utilized every square inch. Sailors and Marines had very little space. Well, unless you were a first sergeant or an officer, or the captain who had a rather large cabin and this sea cabin which was behind the bridge so he could constantly be on call. This is where he most often slept. Of course, every ship is only as good as the food fed to the sailors and the Navy fed them well. It's really kind of mind boggling how many supplies the USS Alabama could carry. It was quite a professional kitchen setup. Everything from a bakery to a butcher shop, even a soda fountain. The Navy made sure sailors were well fed. So let's turn to the business side of this ship. This is where they would load the mid-sized guns. They would take a shell out of the chute, insert it into the gun itself. They'd push it forward. They'd close the door to the gun, and then they'd push the red button and they'd fire it. This is where the sailor who would adjust the elevation of the gun sat, kind of cramped. With regard to the big 16 inch guns, this is from where they would control the elevation of the guns and from where the shells would be fired. It may look like there's a lot of space, but this is a very small cramped area and it was 
thunderous as the 406 millimeter shells were fired. The USS Alabama was a big ship and a lot of things could go wrong. When something did go wrong, this is where it would be fixed, the machine shop. It had everything they needed to fabricate and repair most any part so the ship could stay engaged in the mission. Speaking of the mission, when the ship went into a fight, the combat bridge was protected by heavy steel. But as it cruised in the open sea, this was the standard bridge where the captain would command the vessel. The USS Alabama served its country proudly throughout the Pacific Theater during World War II. It was decommissioned in 1947. In the early 1960s, the citizens of Alabama began an effort to preserve her from being scrapped. By 1965, the citizens of Alabama had raised enough money to bring her home and restore her as a museum. Now let's take a look at the World War II combat submarine, the USS Drum. She was the recipient of 12 battle stars for her service during World War II. Battle stars were given to ships as they participated in particular battles. She was built in the Portsmouth Navy Yard in New Hampshire and was commissioned in 1941. The armament for the top of the USS Drum consisted of machine guns and 120mm and 140mm gun. But below the deck, things were different. The USS Drum had 10 21-inch torpedo tubes, six in the front and four in the back. In between the forward and aft torpedo tubes are where the sailors slept. Much like the Alabama, sailors didn't have a whole lot of privacy. But if you were an NCO, you shared a small quarters with four other NCOs. If you were an officer, you'd share a small quarters with one other officer. And of course, the skipper had his own quarters. Oh, as an aside, when you see actors in movies hop through these little doors, it doesn't work that way in real life. These things are really, really small. As you go into the bridge, you see wheels to control the depth and pitch of the submarine, and one wheel to steer the submarine. These levers controlled the speed of the submarine. Then there was a small ladder that leads you to an upper control room where again you can see the speed, control targeting, and look through the periscope. Again, you could also steer the submarine from up here. If you know why they needed this second bridge, put a comment below. These are the two forward diesel engines that propelled the submarine while it was on the surface, and it had battery-powered electric motors to propel it when it was underwater. When you're in Mobile, Alabama, make sure to check out the USS Alabama and the USS Drum Museum. It is well worth the time.